Hello everyone and welcome to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode we are going to test the lunar capabilities of Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket while retaining enough fuel to land the booster stage. As you can see I added some textures to procedural parts to match the look of the New Glenn rocket. Uh, they are just uh, images, textures overlaid on the normal procedural tanks and also uh, used the, the B9 procedural wings to uh, give, well, not quite the right uh, blue edges to the fins on the New Glenn rocket, but close. Also interested to see that on the website, uh, they had these fins at the bottom here. That's interesting because that makes it possible to add a shuttle to the top, I think. We'll have to take a look at that. In with my new young shuttle, I was strapping it onto the side of the Blue Origin rocket. But uh, if we could put a smaller shuttle on the top, maybe integrating this second stage into it somehow, that might be preferable. So we'll we'll look into that possibility. But for now, the question I wanted to ask was: uh, Could the New Glenn rocket launch the Orion capsule? currently slated for launch on SLS, uh, could it launch it to the moon? And if it can, of course, uh, well, that's one thing less that we need to spend uh, an SLS for. And given the current development pace of SLS, maybe it'd be for the best if we put it on a New Glenn rocket. I used the Kerbal reusability expansion to have the landing legs like that. So we've got those legs there and uh, add tweak scale to that. Well, no, it had tweak scale, I just had to fix it a little bit. Let's uh, go over what I've assumed are the stats for the engines because we don't know a lot of the information. This is the third stage. Technically, the texture on the second stage, uh, this uh, logo is supposed to extend all the way up and include the third stage, but it's complicated to stretch this kind of logo across stages like that in Kerbal Space Program. So. I decided to just uh, keep it on the second stage as with the two-stage version of the rocket and make the third stage silver, which is in line with the fairing look uh, for the New Glenn rocket. But it is a BE-3. I used the model of the J-2 because I couldn't find a good model of the BE-3 and I didn't have time to make one. And uh, let me just show you the stats we've assumed. BE-3U, the vacuum version, 670 kilonewtons uh, is cited by many sources and I've given it a 453 vacuum ISP. Technically it's supposed to have an extendable nozzle and so it should get fairly good vacuum ISP with that and I've got five ignitions on it. Uh, 453 is not the best best. I mean most Hydrolox engines that are optimized for vacuum can manage that. It's nowhere near the 465-ish that an RL10 with an extendable nozzle can get. So I figured that that was okay. And so we're using the J2 model for that, uh, though it's lighter than the J2, obviously. I mean, I think we can expect that. There are two BE3Us here on the second stage. Uh, they used to have a BE4 vacuum version on the second stage, but no longer. And with 670 kilonewtons, it's not strictly necessary to have such a powerful engine. It would have helped. It would have certainly made it a little bit more efficient overall, I think but it's okay. And then we have a cluster, it says RS25 because that's the model I used, and that was so I could use the SSTU Labs mod to make it all in one part. So that's uh, seven engines, seven BE4s, uh, but it's acting as one part. Uh, right now, oops, uh, they're, they've got a 67% minimum throttle, but I need to change that. Really, they should have 20%, and also I need to make them separate parts because uh, we want to be able to recover the stage and that entails shutting some of them down and only lighting one engine for landing kind of thing. But uh, they said that it was a 17.1 mega newton, mega newtons of thrust at sea level and that's what I've given it. Uh, so that's supposed to be accurate. But uh, the question mark is the ISP. We don't know, we do know the chamber pressure, but we don't know the nozzle ratio of the engine or the efficiency, combustion efficiency of the engine. Uh, I've assumed that they're going to optimize it for sea level because that's what these engines at the, at the bottom are for. And so I 
plugged it into the program and optimized it for sea level and these were the numbers I got 315 sea level 338 vacuum uh, if they have a longer nozzle it'll have a better vacuum ISP probably a worse sea level ISP unless it's got better combustion efficiency than I thought they would get so uh, those are the assumptions uh, and let's go through the tanks uh, I've made sure, by the way, that the first two stages would be able to launch 45 tons to low Earth orbit, which is what they said this rocket could do, and it doesn't do any more than that. It does 45 tons to low Earth orbit as advertised, so that's satisfactory. Uh, the first stage here is a default tank, default utilization, 7 meters, the length is as you see it, and uh, they've got this new MLI layers, this insulation layers. Uh, as an option here. I've given it halfway. I don't know what that does. That's new to real fuels. Uh, uh, same here on the MLI layers, but this is a balloon cryo, mainly because with the physical size of the tank at 7 meters, it uh, has a better ratio. It's approaching like the shuttle external tank size, and the shuttle external tank is actually really efficient as far as carrying hydrolox. So I figured this was a uh, good sort of mass ratio and uh, same here balloon cryo on the third stage and the third stage has full MLI layers though and it also has little radiators I don't know how much radiator panel re I need but this is what I've given it so far and actually what I envision for this is that this should not uh, should be some sort of ACES stage uh, like uh, ULA is going to be doing and in fact uh, we should therefore use Hydrolox RCS instead of uh, instead of Hydrazine and just have technically it's supposed to be the boil off from the tanks being used as I could just say hydrogen get hydro gas but let's say, just say Hydrolox just for simplicity's sake and moderate efficiency on that so we'll have Hydrolox RCS thrusters I don't think that's too bad an idea Okay, the payload to the moon is technically 22.7 tons, but I don't expect that we are going to be able to launch uh, all of it to the moon without using the service module fuel, but we'll see. All right, so this is the configuration, and we are going to see what happens. I also decided to try out the KSP post-processing mod and uh, so we've got active right now and we'll see how it does uh, unfortunately we're launching at dusk so it's not the most vivid time for a launch but we'll see how it goes alright I'm gonna throw myself down and it'll be KOS controlling it KOS has been told to reserve 7.5% of the first stage fuel for landing on the barge and we'll see how much delta V that equates to during the launch. Ignition and launch. We are going up. Wow, okay, well... Now that we've gained some altitude, it's cleared some of the terrain and the sunlight is hitting it. And boy is it hitting it. Maybe it should be a little bit darker, uh, considering the sun's position, but I don't know. Maybe it would be like this. That's quite a glow. Obviously with any of these visual um, mods, like post -process anything to do with post-processing, you have to tweak a bunch of numbers to make it look right. It is a very steep trajectory and that is to ensure the barge landing. It's possible to try and put it on a more horizontal trajectory. We'll have to take a look at what's optimal for it. Well, that's a pretty good look. Okay, first stage has separated. Second stage ignition. A little bit close. We could use some sort of hydraulics for that. And we're gonna lose the launch abort system. And let's just check. Oh wait, that's what I wanted. 
2,447 meters per second left in the first stage for landing. I think that's enough. I think that ought to be enough, and drag will slow it down as well. Drag will do most of the work on the way down. And it's got those big fins to control it. I'm not entirely sure at one point the Orion on SLS would separate off the fairings around the service module. I know it does. I'm going to wait until after we move on to the third stage before doing that. We have them decoupling here. It won't separate off the, the command module and the service module. So. Okay, separation of the second stage. Now that's non-reusable right now. If we integrate it into some sort of shuttle though, that's a different story. And here we are on the third stage. Um, let's separate off those panels. Okay, now it's showing 4,800 meters per second. And right about here, we need 1,800 meters per second to get to orbit. So we're pretty darn close. We're pretty darn close. We'll need some of the service module in order to actually get to the moon. But we'll see how much we have left over once we make orbit. We're going down right now, but as you can see, the vertical speed is trending towards zero. So this engine is picking it up fine. Barring any sort of uh, silliness, we should end up in a proper orbit. Let's get the radiators on. They do take power. Oh, I should have just used the action group. Hold on, let me shut that down. Press 2. Okay. So, they are all, they are all active, but I don't know how much oil off there is nevertheless. Or whether I need larger radiators. Okay, we are approaching orbit here and shut down. Oh, don't don't start again. I don't know why it started again. Don't do that. Dang it, that used an extra ignition. But fortunately it has five. I don't know why it did that. I'll have to check. But anyway, as you can see, 50 tons uh, when it's using the third stage is how much it gets to orbit. 45 with just a two stage, but that this includes, of course, the stage itself, so it's all complicated. Anyway, 2,910 meters per second is pretty close to moon transfer. If we hadn't reserved the 7.5% on the first stage in order to bring it back down to the barge, I think this could have, uh, you know, if we expended the first stage, we could have probably gotten enough into orbit to launch this to the moon. If we take, I mean, launch this to the moon without using any of the service module fuel. If we take a look at the boil off, we still got 0.01 per second boil off of liquid hydrogen, but none of the liquid oxygen. That should be fine for now. Let's get the solar panels out. And let me plot for the moon. Okay, we have our plot. And um, I want to activate the RCS thrusters on this stage. Okay, RCS on and node. Very good. So this doesn't really preserve the free return trajectory. It's still on the clockwise direction. I don't know why we have so much inclination. We'll probably need a mid-course adjustment to fix it a little bit. But we'll handle that as it comes. And ignition. Right now on board, we have six crew. I really should have had fewer Gerbils. The more Gerbils you carry, the more mayhem occurs. But we've got 14 days. Uh, with three crew, it would be 28 days, obviously. So I would prefer three crew. But anyway, it is what it is. OK, uh, separation. And actually, we don't want all this going on at the same time. Well, maybe. Yeah, we probably need those RCS ports as well. Okay, here we go. And shut down. Okay, well, don't wander. Okay, good times. Uh, we'll need to do a mid course correction. 
For those not familiar with the system, this engine is actually the AJ-10-190, which is the OMS engine from the shuttle. Uh, modified though, it's using MMH and mixed oxides of nitrogen, that's MON3, instead of MMH and N204, nitrogen tetroxide. So instead of just straight nitrogen tetroxide, it's using mixed nitrogen stuff. Which I suppose is good? Probably. It gets about the same performance. A little bit more thrust though. Oops, did not want it to flip around. Well, it's definitely the case that the post-processing mod does not take extra frame rate. So that's nice. Seems to be working smoothly. Now, we don't have enough delta-v to get into a tight orbit around the moon and break that orbit again. And we do want to bring our Kerbals back. So let's see. Um, add maneuver. The thing is, if it's too loose, it's going to be complicated too. Let's say we use 581, but then, see, we have to break orbit over here. Okay, well, so we'll have to get into this high orbit that I've got planned there, and then I think we have enough to break orbit as well. Whoa, the albedo on the moon is way too high. Okay, uh, selling the fuel down, and ignition. Really bright here. Okay, let's stop it right there. 5 hour orbit, pretty close to what I had planned. It's pretty high that uh, Apoapsis is nearly 4,000 kilometers, but again, uh, given the fact that we had to use some fuel to finish our lunar transit, we didn't have as much as we normally would have. Still, the Orion service module is a little bit underpowered to be honest. Well, we could have used a little bit extra. Looks like we only need about 700 to break orbit. But better safe than sorry. Okay, coming close to the end here. And shut down. We'll need to back off from that just a little bit. So far so good though. Certainly demonstrates that the new Glenn rocket has interesting capabilities. Ah, oh, it's gotta be the nighttime side. That's no fun. Okay, let's just make sure the life support is full up there pump up what we can hmm oh we can't fit any more water in here anyway okay so that's all good so yep well it's a little bit early to dump the service module let's wait some time Okay, now that is what I want. Off it goes. And now let's activate that RCS. Go retrograde. That works. Always nice when it works. Okay, well, we hear the service module destruction. Oh, voice scary. That's a lot of camera shake. I don't need all that camera shake. It's amazing that the vessel mass here is still 10 tons. That's a lot of tonnage here. Maybe we could make the Orion capsule a little bit lighter. That's just really heavy. 
Okay, let's have it stop trying to hold pitch and yaw. Uh, I don't want it. I don't want it to overheat though. Oh boy. Bladers are blading. We started off with a periapsis of 60 kilometers. We ended up at 65, basically. Um, do I trust it to roll properly? 180. Well, I think we're still going to skip out. We do have some hydrazine left. We have lots of hydrazine left, so we're okay, technically. Power is going to be a drain. Let's see. We've got a three hour orbit. Electric charge is going away fast. Uh, just about enough, I think. Well, I really want to make sure it comes down this time, so we're going inverted here. It's interesting how well it rolls compared to dealing with any other direction. Well, we seem to be over land now. 15 degrees south, approaching 16 degrees south, and 124 degrees east. Seems like maybe Indonesia or something? Doesn't seem far enough south to be Australia. Okay, we are through the fire and fury. And now the question is, do the parachutes work properly? Hopefully. But anyway, as far as New Glenn Launcher is concerned, it did pretty well. Not perfect, but uh, pretty well. On uh, what would be a very oversized payload for its normal capacity. Though if they upgraded the engines, if the BE-4s have a higher ISP than I give them credit for, well then that's a different story. Okay, forward heat shield separate. And arm the parachutes, or deploy, fine. If deploy is all you've got for me, deploy is what I'll take. I don't think they're configured as real shoots. We could probably dump some ablator. Uh, that was full parachute deployment and we're not slowing down. We're not slowing down! Oh. We survived though. Uh, that was weird. Let's not talk about it. Um, as far as launching the Orion capsule to the moon though, there are possibilities. And we will explore mo more possibilities with the New Glenn rocket in future videos. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.